Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, as usual, I've got a quite a varied mixture of things. I've got a little bit of machining. I have a bit play around with my new knurling tool. Uh, yesterday, I was across at Richard's place. Uh, we did some work on the central steam wagon. I'll show quite a bit of that. As a gentleman I've come to know through the internet, a lad called Stanley Challenger Graham. Uh, Stanley's a friend of Mick's as well and what happened was a couple of years ago I gave him a, sil a, a small cylinder casting set for a, a steam engine. It's actually for a vertical marine engine and he built a mill engine with it. Now what Stanley's decided to do is he wants to make two more mill engines, uh, one for my wife Deborah and one for Michael's girlfriend Sarah. So what he wants is two more sets of cylinder castings. Um, today we're sitting about doing the castings for them. I went through the process. I took quite a bit of film of it. Sadly the castings haven't worked out very well. Uh, I know why they didn't work out well. Uh, so I've got them to do again. I will put a little bit of video in of the casting process. I'll also put one or two pictures in of Stan's engine. I got a message on Facebook this week of one of my viewers and all he said was that his little girl was surprised that I wasn't wearing my special glasses on one of my videos last week. The video in question was where I was grinding the, I think I ground a flat on the shaft, on the motor shaft on the drilling machine. I mean, I wear these glasses all the time, I wear them to see with. That's what you wear glasses for normally, but these ones have got all my lenses in, but they've got no side screens in. Now I have got a set of subscription safety glasses that I really should wear in the workshop all the time. I certainly should have had them on when I was doing the grinding. Anyway, thank you very much for pointing this out. Here's a picture of the little girl in question, and she's actually got on her special engine yarn glasses. Deb's been back off her holidays this week. Unfortunately, she's full of cold. She's got coughs and sneezes and sore chests. But like she said to me, she says, John, you know, it's, it's nice just to be bad, like ordinary bad, like ordinary people are bad, not to be bad and something really horrible, which I thought was quite moving, actually. I've got a little job to do here. All it is is shortening these bolts down to make them the same length as that one. Like a lot of jobs, there's an easy way and a hard way of doing worse things. The first thing I want to do is measure the length of one of the new bolts. It needs to be shortened. Get a length of 70mm. If I simply zero the caliper at that, then measure the only need to shorten them to. I get a size of 5.95, say 6mm. So I know that this bolt here is 6mm shorter than that one. Zero, 6mm. So each one of those bolts needs 6mm taken off the end of it. We could simply put the bolt in the chuck like that, but then we'll have to set it up, make it run through, plus when you try and put a cut on there, it's going to try and push it out of the chuck, we haven't got a very good hold of it. Another way to do it, I've got a nut, so we put a nut on, and hold them both, Nice and strong, already centered, and rigid enough just to machine that bit off the end. Also, when you screw the nut off, it's going to clean the threads up. That's the way I'm going to do it. Right, the first thing we do, bring our tool in till it touches the end of the stud. Right, all I need to do 
the DRO, DRO, the DRO is set up in metric. If I zero the axis there, I can just use that. And once I get down to six on there, that means I've taken six mil off that bolt, but it'll be the right length. That's the 6mm. Next thing is a tool change. All I want to do is put a chamfer on the end of the bolt. Nice clean tight the end on the thread so the nut goes on and off no problem at all. There is one more we are holding these bolts. This will actually pass right through the chuck jaws with the head going behind the jaws and I can simply grip it like that. That's actually a better way of doing it. So I'll do the rest of them like that. Had the bolt been too short, the first method was a way to do it. Zero. Then that's my last cut. Six mil. Excellent. That's the top part of the mould. That's the hole the metal goes in. Call it sprue. And that's the hole that the metal comes out of when the mould's full, called a riser. It's quite a big riser, so it gives the, the cast, which is the bit in here, the bit I'm going to make, a good reserve of red hot metal, molten metal. This is the bottom half of the mould. That's the sprue hole where the hot metal goes in. That's a runner, it runs in through there, and that's the gate, that's the hole into the void where the pattern was. And that there, that's your central core. That's what makes a hole at the centre of the cylinder. I need to close the mould now. And hopefully it'll, it'll work out alright. That's the mould closed. And that's the hole I pour the metal in, the sprue. And that's the riser, so it goes down there. Through the runner, through the gate. Fills up the cavity. In the mould. And comes up here when it's full. This will be full of molten metal, and as it shrinks down, as the, as the casting shrinks, it pulls metal from this reserve. Hopefully it'll stop ha having any voids or any shrinkage on the cast part. The sand's rough here because I've actually put holes up through both ends of the core, just to try and vent it.
looks good. If you look closely, there's a bad defect on the casting. There's actually a big hole just about in the centre of the bow, which extends onto the port face. I think this has been caused by the riser being too big. The casting's actually fed the riser instead of the riser feeding the casting. <laughs> 